I mean, the, the strange thing is the way that Moscow related to the West for all those years under Soviet communism was driven by ideology. The Cold War was the clash of political, social systems and beliefs. Um, but now it seems much more driven by self-interest. So um, Putin's opposition to the West seems to stem from the personal hurt that he felt at the end of the Soviet Union, which he took really as a sort of personal humiliation. Yeah. And it seems to me that he's spent 20 years with that hurt festering inside him, and it's finally overflowed in uh, February this year. Um, but it's, it, it's f from within him and people like him. Um, and it's very personal for Putin because it's, it, it isn't an ideology driven conflict, however much he pretends it is. It's very personal and it's kind of financial as well because he's a man who spent a long time enriching himself from state monies in Russia, uh, money that should have been spent on roads and infrastructure and health service and pensions. And um, you can only do that for a certain length of time before people start to get upset with that. So if you're a dictator and you're worried that you're in the eye of the storm and people may be moving against you, what's the standard response? It's start a war, isn't it? So, you know, if we look at the wars that he started, they all seem to have coincided with a plunge in his popularity rating. So 2008, he was very unpopular. So he invaded Georgia. Georgia. 2014, again, his ratings were plummeting and he moved into Crimea mm -hmm. and next Crimea. And in the run-up to 2022, uh, this year, what was happening, Navalny was coming back, um, discontent was you know, overflowing onto the streets. Um, so what, again, is his response? It's you know, to start a war. I remember in, at the end of 1991 when George Bush Sr. made his New Year address to the um, American people, it was like a sort of baseball coach who'd won the World Series mm. because the, his whole take on the collapse of the Soviet Union was that we did it. You know, we Americans have stood up to this dreadful communist system for 70 years, but now it's gone. It's a triumph for American values. And it wasn't. <laughs> I mean, the, the collapse of the Soviet Union came from within, within the Soviet Union. And I think that sort of mentality that now communism has gone, we can forget about Russia, was the way that the West approached Russia for the next 10 years at least, and probably more, that we've solved that problem. We don't need to worry about it anymore. Um, but they'd forgotten that the victors are in a pretty sticky wicket if they start preaching to the vanquished. And, it, and the Americans did that, and a lot of people in the West did that. Politicians in the West did that. Um, and I don't know whether it was naivety or it was just sort of... Um, uh, blind faith that you know Russia would change and become something it hadn't been for a thousand years. Um, I don't want to say that you know the reason Putin is now so anti-Western is the fault of the West because it's the fault of Putin and it's the, the fault of the people around Putin. But the West maybe didn't help uh, in the way that it treated uh, Putin and people like him after the collapse of the, the Soviet Union.